I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in my own Nicaragua. We had a question of how easy is it to move to Nicaragua? So many people are suddenly taking an interest in Nicaragua as a possible destination for relocation, to become an expat, to start a new life, to possibly retire. But a lot of people have not been researching it and don't really have a good idea of whether it's easy to move to or very hard, expensive, cheap. So to keep you from being on pins and needles and to make you able to relax and enjoy this video, we're gonna give you the quick answer right away. It is ridiculously easy to move to Nicaragua and free. I mean, you have to get a flight. But there is essentially no effort that it takes to move to Nicaragua. We're going to explain after the bump why that is and just how easy it really is. But for those who are wondering, for those who need the answer right away, it is so easy. I literally have never even heard a rumor of a country that is easier for a North American or a European to move to. So let's explain why that is right after that bump. What makes Nicaragua possibly the easiest country in the world for North Americans to move to? Maybe even for Europeans as well. But there's a number of factors that go into this. First, let's just talk about cost. Coming to Nicaragua, at least initially, has no cost other than the absolute necessary travel cost. That is, you need to have a plane, you need to have some luggage, you gotta own whatever it is you're gonna travel with. Of course, that should go without saying, but someone will point it out if I don't. So those costs are there. Entering Nicaragua has a $10 fee. You can pay it with a credit card at the border. That's it, even if you intend to stay. This is important, whether you're coming as a tourist or you're coming with the intent of never leaving the country again for the rest of your life, you have no cost other than that $10 entry fee in coming to the country. When you're crossing the border, the only thing you really need to have is an address of a place you're gonna be staying. You don't have to show a reservation or anything like that, but you have to give the government a, as the, at the border a, a, a way to contact you for that first day. And mostly this is an emergency contact kind of thing so that they can say, oh, they left something at the airport. We gotta reach them. They've been exposed to something at the airport. They have a way to reach you or to at least leave a message for you. That's all that's for, but it is required. But if you don't know where you're gonna stay, you probably want to have that figured out anyway. Just don't be surprised with that. But that's it. Crossing the border into Nicaragua is insanely easy. Now, it may not be the fastest border crossing you'll ever witness. Certainly going into Costa Rica is easier from a amount of time you have to wait for the lines at the border. Yeah, Nicaragua doesn't have the line thing quite figured out in all cases, but they have a little bit of heightened security. They're gonna check a few more of your things as you're coming in, but it's not that you have more requirements. It's just that they're a little bit more thorough at the borders because they really are into security here. And that's part of what keeps the country so safe. But so for crossing in from a, what does it require? If you're coming here to move, you are good. If you're coming from the US, Canada, or the EU, plus lots of other locations, most of Latin America, but we're not gonna detail every single possible country that falls into this category on this video. We can do that in some other uh, location, but if you're coming from any of those major locations, the vast majority of my audience interested in moving to Nicaragua, you have absolutely no preparation or paperwork that you need to do when coming to the border. You simply have to come with your passport, make sure there's enough time on it, get a flight, have your $10 and welcome to your new life in Nicaragua. And of course, you can come as a tourist with no intention of staying and simply decide that it's fantastic and you don't want to leave. That's actually something we account for here in the country. People do this so commonly. Nicaragua is such a surprise for so many people that accommodating people who are shocked by the fact that it is so safe, so cheap, and that they don't actually have to leave just blows people's minds. And a lot of people simply opt to take advantage of that situation and they never leave or they don't leave for a really long time. They decide to make it at least to some degree a permanent part of their lives. That's how easy it is that people just not leaving is a regular thing. So if travelers can just not leave, you can come here intending to stay without any additional problems. It's that easy. Other major factors that make the idea of initially moving to Nicaragua. Now, of course, there's lots of things that may make it hard for you personally, right? Is the language challenge going to be something that bothers you, right? Almost everyone speaks Spanish. There isn't that much English. That doesn't necessarily make it hard to move to, but overall that may make life a little bit more difficult. And maybe you find the traffic to be a little bit difficult. Maybe you can't decide which city you want to live in. Living here, you know, there's going to be the normal challenges. Every country has something that will affect you. That's not really what we're talking about. None of those things affect you in the initial move to the country. The ability to get here is so simple. So the things that are, I think, worth looking at, though, is that the cost 
cost of living is the lowest in the Western, Western Hemisphere. Currently, the, the currency situation, the uh, housing situation, the rental situation, the all those things are so strongly in your favor as an expat coming here right now that financially the ease of getting into a hotel, getting a rental apartment, doing any of those kinds of things is just so easy that even if you're on a very tight budget, it's noticeably easier than anywhere else you could possibly get to. And because flights from North America, at least, are so short and so cheap, those things lend themselves to moving as well. Of course, there's other advantages, like it's extremely safe, so you don't have to be worried about where you're going to go, where you're going to travel, what you're going to do. There aren't really super dangerous neighborhoods. We just don't have those kinds of problems. We have lots of videos that detail like slightly more dangerous parts of the country, slightly safer parts of the country. But if you're going to any kind of tourist area whatsoever, any place that really shows up as interesting for, for tourists, that has hotels for you, that has, you know, sites to go see, is going to be super safe, like ridiculously safe. The whole country is super safe, but those places will be even safer. So you have no security worries and you have no budgetary wor worries. If you can afford to live anywhere in the Western Hemisphere, you can afford to live in Nicaragua. If you can afford to live anywhere else in the Western Hemisphere, you can afford to live in Nicaragua well, comfortably, maybe not, maybe not affluently, but comfortably. So all those things lend themselves not just to Nicaragua puts up no barriers to you coming. You can just come right now, but also once you get here, any potential safety, uh, location, uh, financial barriers, they do everything they can to lower those, whether intentionally or just market pressure. But they make it so simple for you to establish a life here. It's so easy to rent a place, so easy to just do all those things that you should be able to come with the absolute minimum of ease and establish yourself here. Very importantly, it's, it's often easier and this is hard to believe, so you really have to stop and think about this. Once you realize what it takes to come to Nicaragua, in many cases, it is actually easier to move to Nicaragua and establish a new life here than it is to remain in most of the countries that are sending people here. U.S. and Canada are prime examples. It is easier to move. Staying may feel easy because you're doing just a little bit at a time, but the act of moving to Nicaragua will make your entire life so much easier so quickly under almost all situations that it's actually the greater effort not to come. You have to physically reject Nicaragua, because if you actually realized what it was like and applied that logic to your life and said, I want to do the easy thing, you'd be on a plane right now. I'm recording these videos during a tropical storm and a beautiful rain is returning as I did this. I tried to record during a very temporary lull in the storm, but I'm getting a little bit of rain now, but it's beautiful and I love being out in a rain like this. So hopefully it holds about like it is. Okay, so the final part is the paperwork. What requirements do you have and why is that so easy for coming to Nicaragua? So the thing we said at the beginning, right, you don't need any papers to do an initial move. Most people will be able to live in Nicaragua, and we have separate videos about this, about evaluating whether this makes sense for you, but most people will uh, move to Nicaragua and live under what we call the border run regime, or it's actually under a tourist visa, but it's a permanent tourist visa situation. It's not for everyone, and I'm not saying that it is absolutely going to be the thing you want to do, but the majority of expats who move here, this ends up being what they do, so they never need to do additional paperwork. They do have to learn a little bit about how to do the border run system, right? There's a few timing things you need to know, a few little pieces of paperwork you have to understand, very minimal in most cases. There's a few things you have to learn. We have videos that walk you through all of that. Millions of people, that's not really true, but thousands of expats in a country that only has a few million people do this all the time. It is the majority case because it is so simple and so cheap and just makes life so easy. And for many people, it has a zero effort component. Believe it or not, most people uh, have to put in a little bit of work for this, but a very common scenario, and I have many friends who fall into this, never have to be aware of or take any action to benefit from the system because their lifestyle patterns simply eliminate the possibility of ever running into any problems with it. It's that simple. They literally moved here and never even spoke to anyone ever, never did an extension, never did a border run, nothing. That is a scenario that can happen and is common, not the majority, but common. So be aware that like it could be that easy. You may fall under a more dramatic 
uh, border run situation where you need to go to the border on a semi-regular basis. If you do need to do border runs and you have to do a heavier process, it is very easy. And we have videos that explain all of that. So no need to wonder how to do it. You can look into it, but it's not something to worry about. People do this all the time. It is extremely simple. And then for some people, you may have a need to go through what we know as formal residency. Technically, this is a permanent residencia process, which is more heavy than the border runs. But depending on where you live in the country, some people want it for that reason. And some people have a lifestyle pattern that causes Nicaragua to require this of you. However, it's important to remember that this process is one, unlikely to be something that you need, but possible for sure. And if you do need it, it's not something you need right away. Generally, you're not going to discuss it with anyone, not a lawyer, not your, not your, uh, the government, not border control, anything like that for at least six months and more likely at least a year to a year and a half. And depending on your lifestyle patterns, it could be many years and it may only be temporary. Some people you switch to the residencia from time to time and then switch back to tourism because they just switch back and forth as their lifestyle changes. It's very flexible, very easy. If you do need to do the residencia. Then you have a number of different types of residencias to choose from. You could do one for retirement. You could do one based on foreign income. You could do one based on being an investor here in the country. You can do one based on being an investor outside of the country. If you happen to marry someone inside the country or that's a citizen, you'll get one basically automatically. A lot of different ways to do it and you should at the time that it becomes something of interest to you or a requirement for some reason, speak to a qualified lawyer who will walk you through the current options at that time. I could tell you all the details now, but for anyone who's coming, it will be almost certainly one to three years before you would even want to look at this. And at that time, the chances that the things I tell you today would be applicable is unlikely. They'd probably be similar, but different, like some amount would be different. For most people doing their residencia, the cost is very minimal. And remember, this is not for everyone. This is way down the road. You've already been living here. There's no delay. That was a question that was asked me. What is the delay in coming to Nicaragua? What do you do ahead of time? You do nothing ahead of time. You get on a plane. You come right now. That's how easy it is. You come down. You live here. If the situation that you need a residencia comes up, you will already be living here. You will have been living here and you will live here throughout the process. And so you don't have to wait in any way for this paperwork because you don't need it. Once you've applied, you just wait for it to go through. It's literally that simple. I've been here for three and a half years and my residencia is nearly done, but I don't have it yet and I've never needed to vacate the country. I've had to do the border runs, which some people will point out is technically leaving the country, but I've had to do only one or two, I think two in the entire time that I've been here because my lifestyle took care of the rest, which we'll explain in a different video. But that is how easy it has been for me and it will be the same for you. And if you're worried about getting your residency, there is no place easier. Now, maybe you're in a situation where no country anywhere will accept you. That is incredibly unlikely. If you're coming to Nicaragua with good intentions, you're not coming and being a criminal, you're simply behaving well in the country, it is almost impossible to comprehend that they would ever deny you. They want good expats at this point. They have a very big need for real estate and uh, investment and people just spending money here. And you as an expat represent that. So it's extremely easy for you to come here and Nicaragua is going to go out of their way as long as you're a good candidate, meaning not a criminal, not doing anything bad here in country, um, or outside the country, uh, they're going to go out of their way to try to find a way to make sure it works out for you to, to move here and stay here indefinitely, right? That is their goal. This is not a country that's trying to keep you out. This is a country that is hoping to lure you in currently. We have this uh, situation where they need employment, which you, you're not eligible for work locally. You work remotely. We have lots of videos about that. Again, everything is referenced in another video. I'm just putting things together to make this a quick ability to answer this one question. Um, Everything is 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 very accessible. Um, you're really going to you know be able to work remotely. Um, there's no taxes that apply to you here as a worker because you can't work locally. You can only work uh, remotely. So you have so many benefits coming from the Nicaragua side. Basically, if you could come up with a viable process for moving to a country and said, I want to design the easiest possible way to actually move to another country and not be ridiculous and make it like that it wouldn't function, right? You still have to check people and make sure you're not letting in criminals. You have to make sure people have passports. There's certain things that just obviously you're not gonna work around. But within the confines of, the re of reality, right? If you were to say, what is the easiest possible way to move to a country, you would literally be simply redesigning the Nicaragua system that is in place right now. It doesn't get easier. It doesn't get safer, realistically. It doesn't get cheaper, realistically. Flights from the US are as low as like $60. Like 
seriously, it's hard to imagine a scenario where anything's easier. If you feel something sounds hard, sounds like a big requirement, I guarantee you there is some misunderstanding because there's nothing involved in the moving to Nicaragua that is going to be hard. There are some optional things that could be hard, right? Well, I really want to be an investor in the country. I really want to get the benefits of the extra benefits of investor residency. I really want to, right? You want to do those things and they're not part of moving to Nicaragua. There's something else. Yeah, they might be hard or harder at least. That's different. But you want to move to Nicaragua. You want to settle here. You want to start a life here. You want to test out a life here without making a big commitment. All of those things, it cannot be easier. Just book your flight, come on down, and welcome to Nicaragua. You can figure everything else out once you're on the ground. Thanks for joining me here on my vlog on life here in Nicaragua. It's a pleasure to be able to bring these videos to you. It's been such an exciting few weeks. We have so many new members. A lot of you aren't aware that we have videos that cover all these topics. Um, some of them are older, so we're trying to remake some topics and cover questions that people have. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. The link's down below, and I'll put it on the screen, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, and I'll see all of you tomorrow. And if you're hanging around after the screen goes blank, we're going to put four videos on the screen. Your job, folks, is to click on one of those videos. Pick one up top, pick one down below, pick one on the side, pick it down in the description. You can even search for a new video. Just click on one. It tells YouTube that the algorithm should promote this show.